Hi. Uh, so in this final example here, we're actually going to be working backwards, right? So we're going to start with the equation of the circle and then try to figure out, well, where's the center, how long is the radius, and then we'll produce a graph. Okay. Um, now this is a very different form than what we've seen so far, right? What we've been looking at was called um, standard, standard form of the equation. Um, and this uh, is, well, trying to find the name of this form. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe it's like expanded form or something. Okay. Um, so anyways, we want to kind of manipulate this equation in a way so that it looks uh, a lot similar to this structure here. Right? That x minus h squared, and then the y minus k squared, and then the r squared. Okay, it looks nothing like that at the moment. Okay, um, but we have a couple of tools from algebra that's going to help us manipulate this equation to look like this. <clears throat> okay. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is just kind of reorder these terms, right? I'm going to group the x terms together, the y terms together, and then the constant I'll just move to the opposite side. Okay, so we'll have x squared minus 2x, right? So that's the the x term, so we're going to have, uh, let's write it over here, y squared plus y squared uh, plus 6y equals, and if I add 6 to both sides, then the constant will be on the other side. <clears throat> okay. Then you're wondering to yourself, well, why did I leave such big gaps here? Okay. And the reason for that is because we're going to do a process called completing the square. Right. So I'm going to add a specific constant here. And remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. And I'm going to add a specific constant here, okay, which I will also add to the other side. Okay. And by doing so, I'm going to create a trinomial of x terms and a trinomial of y terms, which I could then factor. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so how do we figure out what is the specific value that we need to add here? Well, the trick is you take half of this coefficient and square it. Okay. So half of... 2, negative 2 is negative 1, and then when you square that, you get positive 1. Okay, So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. Right, Whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other side. Okay, Keep the equation balanced. Okay, And then to figure out what uh, constant to add here, right, I'm just going to take half of this coefficient and square it. Okay, Half of 6 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So I'm going to add 9 to the left-hand side, and to keep things balanced, I'll add 9 to the right-hand side. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So now what we've got is a, like I said, a trinomial of x terms, a trinomial of y terms, and then we have just a bunch of constants over here. <clears throat> okay. So let's take care of the constants. That's the easiest part. Uh, 6, 1, and 9, that's 16. Okay. And then now we're going to factor this. Okay. Um, I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm not going to go over how to factor. Um, basically, the way I do it is I use kind of the box method or the area model. Um, so the factor of this trinomial, it's going to be well, x minus 1 times x minus 1. Okay. The factors of the y trinomial, it's going to be y plus 3 and y plus 3. Okay. Now, did you notice there that the factors here are identical and the factors here are identical? Right? When you multiply a factor with itself, if you, whenever you have repeated multiplication, you can write that using exponents. Right? So this is just going to be x minus 1 to the second power. This is, can be written as y plus 3 to the second power. And then we have our constant over there, 16. <clears throat> okay. So now we're getting, we started with this kind of really odd looking equation. And then using algebra and manipulation, we've gotten it down to look like this. And that is looking an awful lot closer to this. Okay? There are some small discrepancies, such as we have a plus sign here, where we expect to see a minus sign there. And then there's no uh, power here, right? whereas we want to write it as a second power. Okay? So that's pretty easy to do. Right? Uh, adding 3 is the same as subtracting negative 3. Okay? So we can write this as this first term is fine, x minus 1 squared. This is going to be y minus negative 3 squared. Two negatives is the same as a positive. And 16 
is 4 squared. Okay, So now my equation looks nearly identical to the formula here, with the exception of the letters h, k, and r are represented as numbers here. Okay, So I have a minus sign, a minus sign, minus sign, minus sign, right? Everything matches up. Okay, um, So what this tells me is that 1 is equivalent to h, right? so h equals 1. Negative 3 is equivalent to k, so k equals negative 3. And 4 is equivalent to r, so the radius is 4. Okay? And I'll combine these together to get the center of the circle, which is 1, comma, negative 3. All right, um, so the final thing we're going to do is just sketch a quick graph. And so let's draw ourselves an x and a y axis. Okay, the center is at 1, negative 3. Put a little c there, so that's the center. And the radius is 4. So if we go kind of 4 up, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 to the side. Four to the left, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four down. Right, we have the topmost part of the circle, the bottommost part of the circle, the leftmost and the rightmost part of the circle. Right, and then we can just sketch that circle now. Okay, and so the radius is four. Okay. Thanks for watching.